In this video, really simple, I'm gonna help you shoot lower scores and drop that handicap. I'm gonna run you through five things that you just simply cannot do on a golf course if you are committed to shooting lower scores and lowering your handicap. Oh, it's another missed fairway. Weren't you hitting those on the range though? Um, yeah, I guess so. If you wanna lower your handicap, shoot lower scores, you cannot expect to be a different golfer on the golf course to what you are on the drive range. Sounds obvious, right? But I see it all the time. I coach people and I've seen people on the driving range warming up and they've got a left to right slice, let's say. And then I see them on the golf course, first tee, where are they aiming? Straight down the middle. And for some reason as golfers, we kind of expect to be different on the course. We expect to kind of hit the perfect shot. There's a phrase that I really like, and I tell all my golfers to do this, and that's aim your ball flight. So if my ball flight is a left to right shot and I can visualize on the drive range that relative to my target, all of my shots finish kind of over there, slightly to the right of that. If I know that, I need to use that on the course. I can use that to be smart. So on this hole, it's a dog leg right to left. If I'm a right to left player, it doesn't suit this hole, but I can still make it work. So I would be picking something up the left hand side, maybe a tree, maybe a bunker. I'd love it to be quite specific. So let's say I picked right between those two bunkers. Let's say that was my aim. And then what I can do is I can commit to that line. And if I hit a straight shot, okay, I'm in the bunkers. But the chances are it's gonna to drift to the right and I'm going to be in the fairway. And I've played smart. Oh, nowhere near. Still got like 20 feet left. You might watch golf on TV. You might see these world-class players around the greens taking 60, 64 degree wedges, fly to them in low, checking them up really close to the hole. You're never gonna lower your handicap if you try and copy and hit all the shots that the pros hit. They are super talented. Now, from this situation, I have got a bag full of clubs. One of those, two of those, three of those are probably gonna be a better option than taking 60 degree. If you wanna learn this shot, go for it. Find a chipping area, pitching area, work on that. Look at your technique, get some lessons and try and develop that part of your game. But if your goal is to shoot lower scores, there are better options. Like, Think outside the box. Like, why would I not use a putter from here if my goal was to try and get the ball a little closer than I could with a 60 degree wedge without really even trying? I could take a setup with a putter, I could just give it a little putt, and I'm probably going to get a much better result with that than I would do with a 60 degree wedge. That one nearly went in. I've left myself kind of three feet there. How easy was that? So don't try and emulate the pros, don't try and copy the shots that they hit. Sure, try that in practice, but when you're on the course, Think about what your job is. Your job is to get the ball in the hole as quickly as you can in as few a shots as you can. Oh, don't think that was a smart play, was it? Two iron from a, what felt like a 45 degree slope. Never gonna be a great result. So you're never gonna shoot lower scores, lower your handicap if you start making silly decisions, you're too aggressive, you take on shots that you shouldn't and you basically deviate from your best strategy. And I see this all the time. Golfers often go on the course and they have a strategy and they kind of have a goal in mind or a score in mind. Then they make, make let's say three or four bogeys in a row. And what do they do? They start chasing the score. Think about your score like if you were tossing a coin. If I was tossing a coin and I was trying to predict heads or tails, I'd just have to predict 50 heads, 50 tails. But they wouldn't come in a perfect head, tail, head, tail order. I might get a run of four or five tails. But if I'm patient, I'm probably going to get five or six heads in a row, which evens itself out. So yes, you might have had three or four bogeys, but if you stick to your game plan, stick to your strategy, you might hold a couple of putts, hit a couple of good shots, and you can have a run of six pars. What often happens is we get too aggressive, and then we start to compound the problem. And how many times have you had those rounds where it's not off to the best possible start, and it just really gets away from you, and you start having a right nightmare, and you've got to walk off the course? It's because of that. If you have a strategy on the first tee, the reason you've had that strategy is because it's the best way to play the golf course. So by definition, anything else that you do is not the best strategy. Because if it was, that's just the way you do it. So from this situation, look, I'm not gonna get to the green. I've got to take my medicine. I've got to take a club which is shorter, easier to manage. I'm not gonna get to the green, but I can advance it 120 yards, leave myself, you know, maybe another 60 yards. Make a bogey your worst score. Good strategy, stick to your game plan and be patient. That's the best way to lower your scores. You cannot oh, lower your handicap and shoot lower scores if you continually go for flags, attack flags. That ball has finished just right at the flag, 
It's in the bunker, might be plugged, but it's gonna be a tricky bunker shot. I could easily hit that shot, get demoralized, get down on myself, think terrible shot, I've just missed a green. But let's just take that shot in isolation. I've just hit a seven iron, about 165 yards, and it's come down probably about five yards right to my target. If I took that shot on a driving range and hit that shot, I'm happy with that. I've just hit a great seven iron that's gone five yards right to my target. If you're a handicap golfer, you're all gonna be handicap golfers. You're all gonna have misses. Some are left, some are right. You should be factoring that in. I factor that in, the pros factor that in. Very rarely do golf pros hit at flags unless they're inside 100 yards or the flag is in the middle of the green. This shot here, you can see where the flag is. It's tucked on the right-hand side. It's on the front part of the green. It's really difficult. I have to hit a career shot to get near that. So I really need to be thinking, okay, what's the smart move here? I need to go a little left of the flag in the middle of the green and actually try and play probably some five to 10 yards past the flag. Now, obviously I've got technology. I've got the watch which tells me yardage, the middle of the front of the back. I've got all that. So I know where the flag is. I just have to be smart. You're never gonna get your handicap down if you get bad results when you make good swings. Use the right strategy and you can get good results when you make bad golf swings. Now that sounds a lot better. So please don't aim for flags, be smart. Where's the 150? Oh yeah, over, over there somewhere. Sorry. Don't hit the hope shot. If you want to lower your scores, drop your handicap, you cannot hit the hope shot. What's the hope shot? Well, it was what I was about to do there. I see this all the time in the golf course. I take golfers out on the course, they approach a shot, they're just about to take the club away, and I say, what are you gonna do? What's your plan? They often don't have one. They are hoping that the club they've chosen and the swing they're gonna make are gonna get the ball in the green. Great players, golfers who lower the handicap don't do that. So I want to run you through a four stage process to make sure you're not hitting the hope shot. Stage number one is work out some yardages. Front, middle, back. That's what I would do to begin with. So I've got the GPS watch here. I can see 142 front, 181 back, 161 middle. So those are my three yardages. That's the first stage. Stage two is to work out, well, where do I want to hit it? Whereabouts on that green? What distance? And where might I want to aim relative to the flag? So this flag here is on the front of the green. But I don't really want to go chasing that flag, so I want to go a little bit right, and I probably want to play a little bit longer the flag, give myself a little bit of margin for error. So that 155, which is just short the middle of the green, is probably a good number for me. Okay, 155 is where I want to hit it. But I've got to adjust that number. I've got to adjust that based on the wind, any elevation. Quite breezy today, strong wind into me. I know from playing a few holes, it's going to be probably 15 yards, so my 155 is suddenly up to 170 yards. So I've now chosen where I want to aim, which is a little bit right of the flag, a little bit long, and what that yardage will look like, 170 yards, which brings us on to stage number three. I now know I've got to hit it 170. How am I going to get the ball there? So basically, which of my tools am I going to use to do that? Am I going to try and cut a four iron? Am I going to try and draw a six iron? I've got to have a plan of how that ball is going to get there. Because it's windy, I might be seeing a slightly lower ball flight, and I'm actually going to go in there for a six iron, which seems like a lot of club, but back in my stance, knock it down, take a little bit off it into that breeze. So I've now got a club or a tool, which is gonna help me hit it that 170 yards. And then finally, stage number four, you've got to see the shot you're trying to hit. It's much easier to create something that you've seen in your mind's eye. So once you've pulled the club, you don't simply just walk in and hit it. You have some practice swings. You say, okay, that shot that I've just seen, how does that feel? And as I'm making those practice swings, I'm really starting to see that ball flight visualize the trajectory, the flight, the curve, everything about it. So now, as I walk into this shot and I'm about to take the club away, if you said, Chris, what are you doing? I would be able to tell you exactly. It's 140 to the front. I wanna hit it 155. It's playing 170. I've got my six iron. I'm gonna flight it down a bit. I've got a plan. And because I've got a plan, I've got a greater chance of hitting that shot.